a very beautiful Wednesday afternoon from wherever you are. This is Jalango TV and the program on air is Bonga na Jalas. And today, just like I promised you, I wanted to bring for you this guy who, if you love YouTube or know much about YouTube, now this is the guy you need to follow. This is I Am Marwa. This is one of the first people who ever hacked out the YouTube idea and his job is only to travel as he makes content. And today we speak with this guy all the way from Isibandia border. <laughs> Karibu sana ya Marwa. Asante sana Jalas. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. So you are just Marwa. My name is Marwa. Marwa. Marwa yes. who? Uh, Frederick. Frederick Marwa. Yes, Frederick Marwa. Uh -huh. Ondari. So I have a mix of uh, like different uh, names there. Frederick Marwa, Marwa Ondari. Ondari. Yes. So there's Marwa and Ondari, yes. which are native names. Yes. So Marwa, Marwa is Kuria. Kuria, uh -huh. like at the border, Isibania. Okay. Yes, and uh, Ondari is Kisi. So I'm um, this guy who grew up in the village. Uh -huh. Yes, in Isibania. Up to today, I'm still a proud village boy. Still a village boy. Super proud. I go everywhere I go, but still home is at heart. Home is at heart. Yes. Wow. Welcome to Miale. Thank you so much. Miale is the best restaurant in the 254. Thank you so much. I hope you've seen it out there. Yeah, it's really beautiful. <laughs> Super cute. Yeah, you love say. it, eh? Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite meal? Uh, I, I, I like fish. You like yes, fish? I like fish and if maybe ugali when <laughs> I'm home. <laughs> yes, but when I'm far away, <laughs> I'm ready to dine and wine and I think that shows up. Ah, that shows yeah, up. Sometimes I eat crocodiles. Hey. Yes, but You've still. eaten crazy things on, yeah. your, on your way as you travel. Yes, man. Wow. Yeah. Wow. When did you join YouTube? It was around 2016. Mm -hmm. 2016, uh, around uh, August. 2016 mm -hmm. yes that was my first youtube video mm -hmm. yes but by then i was far away from home and my intention was just to show my friends back home in kenya like look where i am things are okay not what you really think about the where country. were you then by that time i was in colombia in colombia yes so you left kenya and went straight to colombia it was my first ever country to go like internationally apart from tanzania which is my neighbor from mm -hmm. where i'm from mm -hmm. so it was just kind of miracle and it sounded crazy to everybody. Wow, what do you yes. mean? You left you left Kenya and just went to Colombia. What were you going to do in Colombia? How did you do we have even the Colombian embassy in Kenya and things yes. like that? So Talk to me. What were you going to look for in Colombia? So this this is kind of a dream actually and uh, many people who really don't contemplate with this may find it really weird, you know. So I finished my university degree in JQuart. I did actual science. And I graduated around 2015. So by then, uh, you know, back back in the university days, we used to sit down as boys and talk our dreams and laugh and make jokes. So I used to tell people, I just want to go. I just want to travel. I just I just want to go and go and 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 people say, Mara, I think you're crazy, man. I think and every day I used to to say the same things. Like I just want to travel. I just want to go and yeah. And people say. No, me, I just want to go out when I'm, I'm like a baller. I have a lot of money and I go there as a tourist and, you know, I live life. Me, I'm like, if I get opportunity right now, me, I will go. Because we had just finished school. I was selling shoes in the streets of Nairobi. I was buying shoes in Gekomba, taking them to Juja. I studied in Jekwa to Juja. So, you know, I was trying to figure out myself. And I was also waiting to graduate, you know, once you finished school. And we didn't leave the environment we were brought up in school. So we stayed around the university. And all, all my boys, we were like 10 of us. So I used to say, I used to have my own room and in a different building, closer to the big place where we used to gather. And these boys had like a, a three bedroom house and all the boys we used to, to converge there and talk and talk and talk and just say our dreams. So just because I used to say, I wanna go out. One day, one of my friends, his name is Ken and a big shout out to you, bro, wherever you are, actually you made who I am today. So this guy came and said, hey, there's this opportunity. You want to go to Colombia? You want to go teach English there and be like a cultural ambassador, you know? So there was like a, a government project in Colombia where they were picking people from all over the world to go and just be like brand ambassadors and teach English because in Colombia people speak Spanish. So this guy got this opportunity because already one of his kind of friend, but like a, f a far friend had already been there and he was there. So he came and told everybody. Everybody laughed at him and they said, hey, this is Marwa's thing, go tell Marwa. Actually, when he was saying that, I was not there. 
This guy came and knocked at my door and said, Mara, man, there's this opportunity, man. So trust me, just like that, uh, after two months, I found myself in Colombia. First flight ever, three continents. Then that's when I knew, I knew like maybe I was destined for something else. And I sold everything. I had like nice seats, you know, in university already when you're finishing. Mm. You have like a nice bed and this uh, plasma TV, home theater, trying to fix life in Nairobi. And also at that time, I was working at Chase Bank as a salesman. So I used to walk around and tell people like, hey, please subscribe, you know, to our, our bank. You know, like, you know, enroll yourself to our bank. So I, I had worked in Nairobi until my shoes was the other side, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I Just used, time to sell accounts. I used to sell accounts and we had targets, bro. Every month you have to. And I remember even I got fired the last week before Ken brought me this good news. So you were fired? Through an SMS, true story, yes. So they gave me a leave, they gave me a leave, <laughs> yeah. like, hey, you need to go and rest, because it was around November. Mm -hmm. When I was at, at my room chilling, they gave me like five days, I got an SMS saying, hey, return everything that belongs, you need to go to report to the main office and go with everything that belongs to the bank, you know, the badge, the phone, we used to open uh, these accounts using phones. And ask my colleagues, hey, have you been told the same? They said, oh, if you've been, if you've received that SMS, it means your job is over. Man, I kept sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I kept sleeping, and that's when Ken showed up, like in a span of two days within that period. Yes. So you sold everything. I sold everything, and I, I, I and actually the funny thing is, this job they wanted you to deposit five hundred dollars. That's fifty k Kenyan shillings for you to be kind of accepted because they wanted like a guarantee. Mm. If you don't go, they will take the 50,000. And even if you go, you have to finish the contract for you to be embarrassed back this money. Mm -hmm. So when people reached at this point, they saw it as a scam, internet scam. Even when I told my own mom, my mom said, hey, Jan, I think you're not heading the right way. Yeah. And you know that time when I'm telling her I'm selling stuff, I'm like, <laughs> take, take, you know? And my best is in my university. You remember we used to converge in a big room. Mm. Others were like buying my stuff. Others were promising me like, don't sell this. I'm going to take it from you. Some took, some didn't until the last day. Uh, wow. Yeah. So you are there. You get into the airport. So I go into the airport. Actually, their visa was uh, like a digital one. So it came like a printed paper because the government of Colombia was processing everything from Colombia, not from the Kenyan embassy. Mm -hmm. So, I get so they have a Kenyan embassy here. Yeah, they have a Kenyan embassy. Mm. So I, I get my papers, and remember, I didn't even have a, a passport. So I, I had to fix things very quickly, you know. And I started <laughs> like, how should I get a passport? How should I do this? So I was running all over. But, you know, I was used to this hustle and bustle because uh, initially I was, I was, I, I had worked Nairobi so much looking for jobs. And actually 90% of these big companies here, if you really search my CV, you may find it there. You might find it everywhere. Yeah, I, I used to drop CVs everywhere. So this, this one passport that yes. you got that day very quickly. Yes. That was first stamped yes. as Colombia. Yes. Has how many more stamps right now? I still have it here a lot. It's full and it's expired. But Let it's, me see. It's not really expired because it has visas which are still continuing. It has a US visa in it. So it, I have to work with it anywhere I go. So these are my passports. I always work with my passport, yellow fever card and uh, the new Kenyan passport. Oh, this is the new one? Yes. So this was the first passport? Yes, and you have to travel with a yellow fever card. There are yeah. countries which they will not allow you if you don't have a yellow fever card. Wow. Yes. So this is your yellow fever card? Yes. Your new Kenyan passport? Yes, and my, my card's bank account. Those, with those, those are the first thing I pack when I'm traveling. So this one has been stamped again and again and it's now full? Yes, but it has a, a valid visa which expires in twenty. Yes, you have, you have this is the Colombian visa? Yeah, yes. This is... I uh, have many Colombian visa because I stayed there for two and a half years. Oh, you lived in Colombia, Mexico? Yeah, Mexico, Cuba. You've been to... Panama. Uh, Cuba? Yes, Cuba. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is my old one and we have a new one here. This is, this is the United States visa? Yeah, I have that one. It's a privilege actually to have it. Uh, it's a privilege? Yeah? Yes. Uh -huh. Because it opens the door for you as an African traveler mm. to go to countries that you need to, to process visas. How many countries have you been now? Uh, 40 countries. 40 countries. And counting, yes. There are other countries which I repeat. 40 countries? And, and others I repeat them. Let's say United States. I've been there like I think 10 or 15 times. I can't actually remember. 
countries like Tanzania, countries like Mexico. There are countries that I always have as a rest because I don't need visa. For example, now that I have a US visa, I'm able to go to Mexico without a visa. So anytime I feel like I'm tired, I rest in Mexico because I can easily go there because I don't need to process the visas. And Panama also is one of my rest joints. So I always rest in Panama. Mm -hmm. When I feel like I need to relax and chill, I go to Panama. I'm seeing here Barbados, Barbados, Bahamas, Republic of Costa Rica, Costa Rica, yes. Hey, and you have some one dollar here. Yeah, I always put it there just <laughs> just to have it, you know. Yes, just to be international. <laughs> yes. Hey, yeah. Republic of Mozambique. Mozambique. Oh, um, this is Mozambique. Yeah, you know they speak Portuguese. Oh, there. so this is Mozambique is a Mo Mozambique. Yeah, because they speak Portuguese. Ah, yeah, okay. To the, to the bank. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. This is. Thailand. Yeah, Thailand. You've been to Thailand. I've been to Thailand, yes. Mm. Which one was this was cancelled? That was Laos. So that actually is a huge story right there. <laughs> why, why, why was this one cancelled? So I, I tried going to Cambodia by road. Mm. And they said as a Kenyan I couldn't cross by road. Mm -hmm. And everybody was crossing except for me. Mm -hmm. So I was in the middle of a no man's land. You understand? You've already left Laos. So you cross. La where is Laos? So Laos is in Southeast Asia, okay. next, next close to Thailand. Mm -hmm. So I was in Laos, and mm -hmm. my plan was to, to, to travel these countries by road. Mm -hmm. So I just left Laos, and mm -hmm. they stamped my exit stamp. Going to the other side, they're saying you can't enter. And you know, this other country, you need to process visa. So you can imagine, I've been in crazy situations. I've been deported also in Hong Kong. So You've been deported from Hong Kong? Yes. So I'm, uh, but I always see myself as a... As a Why were you deported from Hong Kong? You know, other countries actually, you arrive there and they look at you just because you have an African passport, they tell you just be there first. That's the true story. And sometimes I feel uh, like even our government should also push the idea of making our passports strong. Because sometimes you go in a country and they ask you, how much money do you have in your pocket right now? Cash money and digital, like open that bank account. We want to see. And if you can't actually prove that, they put you aside. Yes, and may, may say you're traveling with your girlfriend who is maybe from even Paris or somewhere. She's already the other side. She's waiting for you, this other side. So your girlfriend is on the other side. And you, you're in this other side. Even so you, my girlfriend crossed the border. I, I yes, and she, just because she's from a different uh, country, which, you know, they are, they are relaxed in, you know. Wow, so hey, this one has been stamped so many times too. Yeah. This is your new passport and it's almost getting full. Yeah. I was in the Philippines, like like the paper you see there, that was in the Philippines. This is the Philippines? Yeah, I was stuck there because of Corona for like eight months. Eight in months? A, in an island. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stuck in Philippines for eight months? Yeah, I was stuck. And in an island, actually. You know, Philippines is a, is a combination of islands. All right. So when they lock down, mm. nobody can come in that island and nobody can leave. So you just have to survive, bro. Yes. I was there for eight months. I arrived in Kenya September last I can year. see this one, Bahamas. Yeah, Bahamas. Tanzania. Yes. There are many more. Mm. Hey. <laughs> Cambodia. Cambodia, You've yes. You've been to Cambodia. So the Cambodia is where I was trying to go and they cancelled. So I had to go back to Laos and mm. Laos, they had to cancel that uh, mm. exit stamp. So they, st they stapled on it another stamp saying cancelled. It means it's, it's invalid to be to be recognized like I've exited. So then I went to Cambodia by flight. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Zanzibar. Yeah, Zanzibar. You know, so there when you arrive, they, they act as a, a different country. It's in Tanzania, but you have to go through immigration again. Ah, okay. Yes. So it's a, it's a different country altogether. It's in Tanzania, but uh, it acts like a country somehow. So when you were in Mozambique, you landed at Mavalani. No, Maputo. Maputo. Yes, Maputo. Uh -huh. Yes, but the borders could have a different name. Uh -huh. Yes. Wow. Uh, how was Barbados? What did you love about Barbados? Barbados was great because it's Rihanna's home. Mm -hmm. So I visited Rihanna where Rihanna was born. And it was a very humble, uh, like, homestead. And that really encouraged me a lot. Like, wow, this superstar came from this humble, humble beginning. And also there, there are many blacks, you know, Africans. So again, you get to learn the culture. Like it looks like I'm in Nairobi. It looks like I'm in Mombasa mm -hmm. because they sell potatoes, sweet potatoes in the streets. They sell veg. It feels like home. Even Jamaica. I was in Jamaica also. 
it's it feels like actually you in somewhere in Africa, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, and sometimes when you tell them you're from Africa, especially the immigration guys. So these countries are really different when you're traveling as black, actually. Okay. So let's say you go to a country where the black population is high. They really welcome you. They feel like, wow. One of us is one here. One of us has come. Mm. And they really wish they would visit your home country. But you, the opposite is true. So I hope you understand what my statement is. Mm. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Panama. Yes, I was, Panama, it's like my rest area. I've been there, I think, maybe, maybe 50 times. I can't even remember. Yes. In Panama. Yes. Let's say I have traveled. My visas are over everywhere and I want to strategize where next I go to Panama. Yes. Because as a Kenyan, you can stay there for six months visa free. So. So Kenyan passport is very strong in Panama. Yes. You can go to Panama. Yes. The Caribbean. And uh, yeah, most Caribbean countries, you can go there mm. with a Kenyan passport. Costa Rica. Costa Rica itself. Pura Vida. <laughs> yes. So I, lo I love Costa Rica because... Uh, <laughs> the lifestyle there is really nice because people are more natural. Mm -hmm. No cutting trees, it's like jungle and stuff. So you go and feel like you are lost somewhere in the jungle. So there's no cutting trees in Costa Rica? Uh, yeah, because they really, like, they call it Pura Vida to me, like uh, pure, pure life. Mm -hmm. And it's because of the, n the nature or natural uh, resource that they have. Wow. Yes. There are so many, so many stamps, my friend. Yeah, and sometimes uh, that helps me. Mm. And sometimes people can, hey, what's your job? So, you know, when you give the immigration officer your passport, at first they really doubted who you are because they saw the first part, the first front page as Kenyan. And, and I also I feel even the color of the passport has an impact. You know, like when, it's gr when I had gray, I didn't have much problem. Now it's new. Like it's many people, you know, many countries, they use this kind of gray. This one. Th this one. So now when you have this, even the guy sees you from there. You know, you know you're arriving at the, so you, you, have to, you, have to, you have to have your document like this. So they see you even from there. So the moment you're there, you're already prepared, like they have to put you upside and ask you these questions and more questions. And more. Where were you most frustrated? Hong Kong. Hong Kong? Yes, Hong Kong and Cambodia. Mm -hmm. But at the borders, you mm -hmm. know, yes. Actually, these countries are not bad, but the borders are the, the crazy parts, actually, yes. So let's say, like, Cambodia had a lot of problems, but when I went into the country, I, li I really loved Cambodia, bro. I was like, man, it's a beautiful country. So you flew into Cambodia? Yes, after being rejected crossing by land. And you know, sometimes this is crazy. As a, as a backpack and a traveler, sometimes you meet as groups. You know, we are like birds. We meet and separate. We meet and separate. So you meet and people are like, we are going to this country. And like, yeah, that's my plan. So let's go. And when you arrive at the border, the bus leaves you right at the border. So you are a backpacker? Yeah, I'm a backpacker and I call myself like a, a really huge digital creator and, and, and also a traveler. For anybody who doesn't know who a backpacker is. Yes. Yes. You just, uh, you just have one bag in your bag. It has everything. Yes. It carries your office. It carries your clothes. It carries your shoes. It carries your... Maybe if it's raining, you have rainy jackets, everything. Yes. Now, in all these countries that you've traveled in, yes. uh, which one would you say that, you know what, uh, if I was not Kenyan, I would live here? I think I love Colombia. I don't know. It's uh, just a vibe for me. Is that where you were kissing all the women? Yes, that's the place. Yes. But that day in Colombia, you got really drunk. Yeah, the thing is, actually, I, sometimes when I'm out there, I want to be a wild guy, you know? <laughs> while like i just want to live life eh, eh. yes and sometimes remember you've been like in this plane into the other plane man you feel there and you relax and and you just want to live life bro yes you go for it yes you go for it like a lion you know from africa eh, eh. yes you go for it and the women were kissing you all over it's a vibe bro you know when you have a vibe it's they, it's electric you know <laughs> yes. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. It's yes. a vibe. People, yeah. it's a vibe. Now, let me ask you. Yes. You are to the United States. You yes. are in Zanzibar. Yes. You are in Colombia. You yes. are in Thailand. Yes. You are in Cambodia. Yes. How are you getting money to travel? Uh, actually, my job is to travel. Now, that's the crazy part of this. <laughs> Sanitize. <Yes. laughs> Sanitize. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> my job is to travel. How how is your job to travel? If I don't travel, hey, you don't make money. I don't make money. I lose. Actually, I'm running like like for example, right now I'm I'm back home here. Hey. I've been on 
embarking in this project where I'm constructing a house. Mm. So we'll talk about that, by the way. My bank account is running the other way. You know. Because you are not traveling. I'm not traveling. So how do you make money while you're traveling, while you should be actually using, using money? money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why I see Tell us the whole concept of so traveling and making money. That's why I always see myself as, as maybe, I, I always think outside the box. You know, you, and actually I think Kenya, growing in Nairobi, not really growing in Nairobi, like, like when I was in the university at that time, I learned a lot of stuff. I learned how to hustle. I, had, I learned how to really use my mind, like to think. Me, I'm the guy who goes to the internet and, and, ask my, uh, and asks their questions. How can I travel the world for free and get paid? You know, like I challenge myself with like crazy questions out of the blues. You know, how can I sleep and make money more than when I'm working? I type those questions right there <laughs> and I find answers and then I, 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 I put the work into it and I live that life, you know. <coughs> Hey, so you go to the internet and ask people. I uh, are you ask right there on YouTube. Are Google? Yes, Google everything. How can I travel for free and for get free paid? And get paid. Yes. And you start traveling and get paid. paid. And actually, if I don't travel, I How don't get paid. Who, who are these people who are paying you for just traveling? So the thing is, uh, the thing is, uh, I'll say you are crazy. This guy is crazy, people. This guy is crazy. I think I'm local. You know, I speak Spanish too. Eh. Yeah, I learned in the streets. Uh, you, you speak Spanish? I speak fluent Spanish. Uh, can you talk to me in Spanish? I know a bit of it. Hola, mi amigo. Uh, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't know. That's not Spanish. Yes. yes. Eh, that's you know, sometimes you that's go called Spaglio. Sometimes you go to countries. Eh. Like I was in Haiti. Eh. You were in Haiti? Yes, I was in Haiti. Haiti, Haiti is yes, a people, people fr speak French Creole. You understand? Not really the pure French. French Creole. It's a mix of French and their native language. And me, I'm black. And everybody nearly, let's say 90%, 98% of Haitians are, 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 are black. So, you know, I want to buy bananas. I want to go, you know, and, and I can't speak anything. And I don't know English. And they don't even speak the French. And I don't speak French. And I don't speak Spanish. So I have to pretend like I'm, I'm, I'm mute, you know. So you have to behave in that environment like you're mute. But anyway, let me go back to your question, how I make money as I travel. So the thing is, uh, social media. Actually, social media is a powerful tool. So me, I didn't know, when I started uh, YouTube, I didn't know like people get paid. Me, my job was to create videos and show my homeboys back home, like, look, man, life in Colombia is good. I'm doing good because many of my boys used to ask me similar questions. Oh, man, how is dating in Colombia? How is this? How is the job? How is so... How is the cost of living? So I, I decided, let me make just a, a video where I'll be, when people ask me, I just share them. But the funny thing, when I arrived there, and actually I had saved a lot of money to buy my first camera, and when I arrived in, on YouTube, I realized the first day I arrived on YouTube, they asked me, do you want to get paid as you create your content? First day, not these days where you have to reach targets, you know. Those days, 2016, mm -hmm. the first day you arrive on YouTube, you start getting paid. Mm -hmm. The green icons show on your page. So me, I was making videos as I was teaching in Colombia. Every day I used to get like one dollar, two dollars, and I would, I would be, I would, I would, I would feel super excited, and I would tell my colleagues right there in Colombia, like, look, man, I'm making money, and they look at the money and laugh at me. They would be like, oh, just two dollars. But for me, I don't know. I, I just felt super excited, like, wow, I didn't have these two dollars, you know. And now I have these two dollars in my pocket. As in, and also that is a character that has really helped me. I always see everything as a, as a blessing. Like, man, I didn't have this. Now I have it. I didn't have, today, yesterday I had 10. Today I have 11. And I don't actually compare myself with other people. Like, oh, man, that guy is much far. Or he came from behind and passed me. I, I know. Me, I appreciate the progress. Like, wow, I didn't have this. And now I have it. So I, I was making videos. And I started making money. money. I saw like $60 one day. I'm like, wow, man, I could make $6. And I imagined when I was in Kenya, I was getting paid like $120 a month, you know? And I used to work in a bank with a suit, short hair, and, you know? And I used to talk a lot because you have to convince clients, you know? So that's when I realized, wait, this thing, this thing could be something. But not really, you know, I was new. I didn't have a coach. I didn't, but anytime I had crazy questions, I asked on YouTube. That was my teacher. I didn't ask anybody any stuff, yes. So one time in Colombia, this is a story of another day, I was homeless. So I lost everything. I lost, I lost you know, when uh, I lost my job, and this job was attached to my visa. 
So I lost my job and my visa was canceled and I was given like two weeks either to leave Colombia, mostly that was the most definite, or look for a way I could stay in Colombia and legally. You understand? So that time I was making money on YouTube a little bit. That's when I realized, no, 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 no. Now I have to focus on this thing. Because after that, actually, I solved my problems and I, I found a new job and I got a new visa to cut the long story short. And after getting the new job, that's when I realized, no, I have, after one year, I tried to apply for a visa in Colombia again. You know, Colombia was like my mother country, you know. It was the first country I'd ever been abroad, far away from Africa. And it was the first country. Colombia is far. Yeah, it's far. Uh, Bogota, Colombia, Medellin, yes. Cartagena, yes. It's far. Yes. Colombia is far. So but when I, you, let's, before I lose your trail of thought. Yes. How do you go to Colombia from here? First stop? So first stop, I was in uh, Amsterdam. Yes. Wow. Amsterdam. So it was Amsterdam, then from there. You know, I had never traveled. I'd never traveled. So I was this guy. Even the immigration guys here in Kenya stopped me and said, and said, what are you going to do in Colombia? Do you know if they're going to take your kidneys? And you know, the government had sent me a letter in Spanish. So I would show them, look, man, I have an invitation from the government. They would say, do you know how to read what this letter says? I said, no. I was the last guy to go into the, into the plane. I remember it was a KLM flight. I was the last, last guy. My name, they would shout and say, Frederick Marwa, last call. I'm saying, let me, get you. Man, let me go, man. And remember, I've sold everything in Kenya. What will I tell my friends, man? So, let me go. Man, it was crazy, man. Yes. It looks like a movie and it's true story. True story. Yes. Wow. In these countries that you've been traveling, yes. what are the worst things you've eaten or foods that you never thought you can eat? You know, mostly I would say seafoods. Seafoods? Yes, seafoods like eating crocodile soup, you know, sometimes even snakes, like especially in Asia, they're extreme. Yes, and sometimes you go to those countries, maybe here in Kenya, you know, when you feel like you're a bowler, you have some money, you eat some shrimps. Shrimps are for poor people right there, you know. There are people eat like frogs. You know these small frogs which jump and make loud noise? They are mm. small ones, they really jump. Mm -hmm. Those are like some of the most expensive foods in Asia. And it's just like for rich, rich people. And now sometimes I want to dine and feel like, wow, man, I'm living in Asia. And actually I had even my ex-girlfriend is from there. So Boo. you can imagine, yes. Mm. So I had to eat those type and she would cook. And you know, you have to be super open-minded. Super open-minded. So you've eaten frogs, you've eaten snakes. Yeah, I've really tested a lot. But uh, I, I'm always more conservative, you know, if I try that, I'm like, okay, I, I've just tried it, but I want to I go back and eat some rice and beans, it looks kind of normal for me, you know? <laughs> yes. So where did you get uh, meat boo? In Thailand. I was traveling in Thailand. That was, uh, uh, I left Hawaii for Thailand. Her name is actually Boo. Bo, yes, B-O. Mm. Yes. So I met her in Thailand, and you know, sometimes being a black boy out there in countries where not many black, black people live, you're like a star, you know. You go to a club like this and all the girls just want to see like, hey, what's up, boy? And if you have some moves like dance moves and stuff, bro, yeah, maybe it's because you're married. Let me not spoil this. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 uh, yeah. So you had a very nice time. I've always had a nice time when I'm traveling. First, <coughs> I travel simple, you know, I travel simple. Mm -hmm. So when you travel simple, you know, you are not on vacation, you are a traveler. There's a huge difference there. Vacation yes. and, and tra a traveler. Super different, <laughs> yes. Vacation, you want a five-star hotel next to the beach, some massage. A traveler, you want to go to the villages and even immerse yourself to those people and, 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 you know, yes. So let me ask you, where did you ever receive the most hostile, hostile reception? I think Hong Kong. You know, Hong Kong, I was deported. So I arrived in Hong Kong from San Francisco, California, after 16 hour flight, okay? I arriving there, so we are, uh, we are crossing the border. The guy who was sitting next to me was an American guy, and he, he's in front of me in the queue. He passes, so even he's waiting for me because we, were, we had conversed, we had talked, you know, we were like kind of friends now because we had met in the plane. And arriving there, uh, I give her my passport, actually this passport here. The lady even does not open it. He passes it along to the next officer behind the, you know, when you arrive, there's a front desk. And before, after that, then there's like an office, depending on the different setup of the immigration. 
So she hands it over and I go there. So then the guy who, the lady hands, hands over my passport to some guy and the guy hands it over to another guy and they call me now to cross. So they take me to this room and this guy takes a paper and starts writing, where are you from and this and this. So I tried to explain myself as much as I could and all of a sudden this guy said, uh, uh, we are sorry, we can't let you in. And you know, they have tried to look for a way like, uh, and you know, I always travel with uh, my pass, like my bag. I never give, put it like in a plane, like maybe like a luggage. I'm always with it. So they've checked my bags. They've seen everything. They've seen like, this guy has no problem, you know. But still, this guy says, uh, you can't come in. So they put me in a detention center in a room. I stay there like for 24 hours. They give me some food. I'm, I'm really nervous. I don't want to eat that food. Then I'm now deported back to the U.S. Because they gave me two options. Either you go back to your home or to the country you came from. So, and I'd left the US. So, you know, right now, and they have already made the decision. I'm trying to convince these guys, look guys, I don't know what's wrong, and I'm, I'm very okay. I don't have any legal stuff or s something like this, but they already made up their mind, and it's a country, you know. And you know, countries, when they reject you, they are not obliged to give you any statement, reasons, they cannot. They just say no, and that is it. Because they say we are, uh, so, uh, um, how, how do you say this? I mean, sovereign. Sovereign state. So. My explanation. So, but you see, as a traveler, me, I'm ready for this. And you know, that time I write, I write to uh, the Kenyan embassy. Up to date, they have never responded in Hong Kong. The Kenyan embassy in no, Hong Kong? Actually, they have my email, and I'm not just trying to say. So, and, and actually, that is also another thing. When I'm traveling out there, I always feel I'm alone. I don't feel like maybe I have a backup from my government. Because I remember even there's a time we were stuck in the Philippines, and my girlfriend, who was from Thailand, her government took her from the room we were staying after oh, like three oh, months. Mm. Uh, me, I knew here I have to survive, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so you can After imagine. three months? She was taken, and me, I was left there, and I survived for the next months alone, you know. Which is the country that you've lived the longest? Uh, Colombia. Col Colombia, Mexico sometimes. You know, like Mexico, I will, but Colombia I've lived the longest, like continuously, two mm. and a half years mm -hmm. yes and it's the country that made me who i am in terms of content creation discovering myself mm -hmm. and knowing like really what i want to do in the life. biggest uh video that you've ever posted on youtube has yes. how many views 8.5 million views 14 minutes and followed by like 4.7 you know me the thing is about my youtube channel is I really don't want people to define me and say, you only do this stuff. Meaning if that day I don't do it, then I, I miss everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm always trying to mix everything. Even if I'm getting views in one video, I can't stick on that same content, like let me stick right here. Because I used to do a lot of nightlife videos, like partying and, and dating. I would ask questions about dating and also do travel and food and Airbnbs, houses. I do like all mix. but. Nightlife, travel, uh, they get a lot of views. But you see, like when Corona came, everything was closed. So does that mean I close my shop too? No. No. I look for another venture. Yes. So the venture, you came back home? I came back home to build houses. Yes. To build your house? Yes. I love Africa. I love Africa a lot. I love Kenya. Mm. Even if I'm far away, sometimes I'm, I'm dining in, in, in Hollywood. I've been here also in, in, in a big series called Narcos. Yes. Narcos. Yes. Mm. If you look at the third uh, se season three, the last episode, I'm there with the blue suit. Yes. Narcos. Narcos itself. Where is Narcos? Uh, it's a series of Pablo Escobar in Colombia. Yes. Actually, I watched that series before I left Kenya in 2015. It was trending. And when I went there, I found myself in and they said, dreams are valid. Yes. Yeah. Pablo Escobar. Ah, real story. <laughs> Sanitize. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, hey, yes. hey, hey. Yeah. This is this is crazy. This yes. interviewing you is like a movie, my friend. Real movie, my brother. True story. <laughs> yes. True story. So and actually I, I intend to do a movie about my life, even we are working on it. So 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 you you are back home. Yes, I'm back home to, and you, to you're wondering, Africa. Uh, you yes. are wondering what else? Yes. I was like, no, man, we have to build Africa. You know, sometimes when you're out there, 
me, most of the time I say I'm from Africa and now if people insist where are you from, I say from Kenya because I always try to see Africa as one. I don't believe in borders, you know, because these are the borders that really restrict, especially for us Africans. We can't even move on our own continent, but Europeans will move in their continents like crazy. Like, you know, in other countries, people just drive and go. Like, even, even like bo other borders, you can't even tell. This house is in this country and the other one is right here. But for us... Yes, but for us, like, even going to South Africa, I remember I was going to South Africa early this, know, last year, September. It was crazy, man. I had to explain everything by, by a letter, written document, like, this day I'll be doing this, and this day I'll do here, I'll sleep here. Hey, man, I feel like... You, and sometimes, and my girlfriend who was even not from here, she even doesn't need visa, like, you know? She just walks in. And me, I'm from right so here. So our color is still very, so much discriminated. When I look at Jesus on the cross, I see Africans. Yes. If you see those nails on the feet, this is your passport, my brother. Yes. You have passports, you can't move. You are nailed. If you see those hands knocked right there, we work so hard, but we are, you know, yes. If you see Jesus on the cross, it's a black man right there and it's you. Yes. Try to interpret that picture very well. Yes. So you're putting your house back in the village. You first yes, built for your mom. Yeah, I built for my mom because that actually settles everything. Even if, you know, like your conscience comes clean and, it, and even if you want to party, you want to spoil your money, you feel like, ah, I'm not going any loss, you know? Because your mom is happy. You know, there's nothing like making your mom proud, man. And especially when she's alive, bro, you know? There's nothing like that. So priceless. So you started and finished her house first? Yes, so we did her house. And for those guys who watch us, they have seen. I have my sister here also. Yes, D. Mwango, she did good videos about the house. And now I'm doing my own house now. Wow, your house that is crazy. People are saying that you're building a whole church yes, for a house. It looks like a mall. I want even people to be landing with choppers on, on the roof. On yes. the roof? Yes. Right now, because right now it's just the first slab. The f second that's the that's how the plan of the house is yes yes so and the roof of the house mm. everything is a slab so helicopters will be landing right there so if you are coming jalango you don't have even to look for these potholes yes you just fly there and land on top of uh, your house just, just land bro yeah this is very possible Why how much has it costed you up to now i don't like talking about money that much but i'll say around a hundred thousand us dollars that's around 10 million yes yes my brother and you haven't even moved in I haven't moved in and even still I know I have a long way to go because I know <laughs> putting things like jacuzzi, saunas, crazy swimming pools and, and you know, full glass house, you know, bulletproof. I'm still on the way, my brother. I'm actually, I just started. Yes. Sanitize, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Guys, I told you about I am Marwa. If you're following on, uh, him on YouTube, then you already know. How many subscribers are you at now? 270 270,000 yes. subscribers yes, and uh, how many views so far 88 million plus 88 million yes you know actually i don't have many subscribers and i know the, i know the reason why because i'm always an outsider mm. so if i go to philippines explaining philippines to people who live there they will they will watch me but they will not subscribe because they, they will be like oh. even like when i started my youtube channel you know my accent was so different and most people who watch me are like outsiders not from africa like maybe europe uh, like uh, in the United States, and for my viewers, please subscribe to Jalango TV right here. So, people always wonder this crazy accent, you know, who is this guy? You know, that's like the mystery. And when I say I'm from Africa, they can't even believe it. And even my own people in Africa think I'm, I'm like uh, African American. So, you understand? Mm -hmm. Like, this guy is traveling so much, like, he, he, maybe he's not one of us. Yes. Wow. And I'm so, traveling with African so, passport. So, yes. so, so, you are at 88? million yes yes you can check you can check. go out to marwa go check views i don't know if it's 89 right now around there yeah. yes yeah. <laughs> yes well, before we go on we, before we go on definitely we know that euros are here and spain went home spain went have you been to spain not yet not yet. to italy uh, only in Amsterdam. In Amsterdam. Yes. So no, no, no. last night was Italy versus Spain, and it went into the penalties. And guess what happened? Wow! Hey, hey. the goalkeeper saved three, three penalties, and just like that, Spain left the Euros, wow. and they're home. 
And as we speak now, Italians are in the finals, waiting for tonight. That is England versus Denmark. England versus Denmark. Definitely Euro Ibambe na Bangbet. Mm -hmm. Euro Ibambe na Bangbet. Eh? Bangbet are giving you the biggest odds in this euro definitely because euro in a bamba na bank bet sign up on bankbet.com and enjoy free bet for just registering for just re registering on bankbet.com you already get your free bets they have the biggest odds on all matches this euro 2020 season including today's semi-finals that is england versus denmark their pay bill number triple nine double eight zero and if you don't have a smartphone, just dial star 852 hash or just SMS the word play to 20829. They have this amazing hoodies that we are giving tonight. Please put the hashtag Euro Ibambe Nabambet. Now, Leo, England versus Denmark. Where is your money? I still think England and this trophy is coming home. Euro is coming home and Italians are saying that Euro is coming to Rome. Is it home or Rome? I'm telling you, put your money on England tonight so that we can meet in the finals. And that is courtesy of Bangbet. Wow. Do you do some betting sometime? Not really, but so, uh, I've been to Los Angeles, not uh, Las Vegas. Uh -huh. I did a lot of gambling there, bro. Uh -huh. Yes. You just wanted the, the feel? Yeah. Now, if you love the sport, there's only one platform that I need you to put your money on. Yes. And that is Bang, bang, bang Bet. Yes. Now, definitely, you know, in a Bamba and a Bang Bet, and uh, tonight is a cracker, my friend. Mm -hmm. England versus Denmark. Wow. Wow. Looking at the front, Unashanga, who will be playing in the front pale england awajui kama waweke arikin waweke jamivadi ama waweke rashford it's crazy pale nyuma kama kawaida you know the people up in there manchester heavily represented full back harry maguire dani 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 euro ibambe na bangbet make sure that you place your bet out there and the pay bill number is triple nine double eight zero and if you don't have a smartphone just dial star eight five two hash or just sms the word play to two zero eight two nine remember you get free bets for just registering check out bankbet.com so that you are able to start betting out there my brother your story is crazy thank you my brother yes that's true true life story yes crazy crazy yes Yes. So, have you started traveling again? I plan to start maybe from next month. I'm trying to, like, put my things ready, you know. After six months already, I feel like I'm a villager, you know. So, I have to check everything in place, you know. And also, I have to build my bank account because, as I told you, sometimes you go to other countries and they want to see how much money you have in your bank account. And that's what will let you into the country. So, you know. So right now, things are not as good. I've been doing a lot of construction, mm -hmm. so you can totally understand me as a fellow constructor. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to fix everything. So from there, then I'll be hitting the road. Yes. Wow. Yes. Our channel has 36 million views now. Yes. Our channel now, Jalango yes. TV. Jalango TV. Yeah. One year down the line. Wow. That's actually one thing I really admire about you. Let me talk about you is Jalango. You really push yourself. And I always feel that you show people this the African dream. Like it's possible, it's possible. You know, here and about, you make it. Yes. You know, me, I have these uh, two things in Swahili. Let me speak for my international audience; they may not understand. Nina kichwangumu for success, na nina kimbelembele for success. Those two things. Kichwangumu na kimbelembele. Yes. Like you know, sometimes uh, when you're growing in African homesteads. You try to do some stuff in your house and your mom beats you and tells you, no, do this, do this. No, kids should be left. They should be left to explore those things they are doing in the house. If you see your kids trying to do this, find them a conducive environment to keep pushing that idea. Because you don't know about tomorrow. Yes. I studied actual science, now I do YouTube videos and traveling the world. <laughs> you know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you started actual science. Yes. But now you just do YouTube. Yes, I'm traveling the world. I'm yes. traveling the world. Yes. I'm seeing it raw and uncut. Yes. And actually, I didn't t ask you which is the most amazing, amazing experience you've ever had while you're out there. I've had a lot. 
actually you know even sometimes my hard experiences they're like amazing sometimes okay because i when after passing those experiences i see like ah if i've been through that stuff this one you you'll know? just move <laughs> yes, yes being deported being thrown out and also being discriminated on. yes i remember i told you a story about cambodia and laos so this is cambodia i've exited i don't have visa anymore i'm supposed to enter this country by land in between here is no man's land and you come to this country and they said no to you so you're left in between here no man's land so you're wondering will you sleep there will you you know bro hey yes <laughs> Wow, and you brought your sister in in, in content creation. Yes, my sister Di Mwango. I wish she, she can come and say hello. Please come, yes, come. Yes. Di Mwango is here. Yes, also Dean. very, very big on YouTube. Yes, I'm uh, super proud about her. Wow. Yes. Hey, just, come, just, come. Yeah, just sit, sit yes. here, sit here <laughs> next to your brother. Yes. Uh, the camera will get you really nice. Yes. You've also uh, been doing your YouTube channel now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You just finished campus, you now watch you a lot. Yeah, thank <laughs> you for the support. <laughs> <laughs> and mommy was, uh, mommy came to pick you. Yeah, my mom came to pick me at <laughs> school and I was really humbled because she saw me when I was really young as a smart girl. She <laughs> would tell me, you are university material already. And I could be like, oh really? Yeah, and I saw that dream unfolding each and every day. And she came to pick me and it was one of my best experiences because nobody is being picked at the university. People just go their way. You go with their boyfriend, you get married. But people were almost like, I want to come and pick you up. And I was super humbled. Mom, I know you'd watch this. Yes. Shout out to you. Our congratulations, mom. <laughs> <laughs> now, a quick one. Mm -hmm. You've also got yourself into traveling. I saw you, you were in Ghana the other day. Yeah. You were in Kigali. Yeah. You want to follow your brother's footsteps? Exactly. That's what I want to do. Wow. Full time, maybe so God. What did you do in campus? Actually, I'm taking bachelor's degree in education, which mm. I already finished. So, mm. professionally, I'm a teacher. Professionally, you are a teacher, yeah, but it's not something you want to pursue. No, 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 no. you want to travel the world and create content, exactly. Wow, guys, <laughs> if you are a parent out there yes. and you are first born son, yes. and your daughter shows up and tell you. Plus our we last have, born, David Zunia. And also, he's also in content creation. Actually, when I was constructing my house. I've seen him, the one in dreadlocks too. Yes, <laughs> when I was constructing my house, there are things we call trappers. He sponsored, the trappers, the, yes. what holds the slabs. Yes. yes. He sponsored me, and actually they were like close to 150. 150 trappers? Oh, no, 150K, Kenyan shillings. 150,000. And he sponsored me. From he's, his content creation. He's in first year, yes. I told him to go and do film, yes, you know, I, I believe in education that sometimes you don't, have, you don't want to say, I don't want to go to school, because sometimes you may reach in a point in life where people cut you just because you don't have that paper. So it's very important you go to school and at least have that paper in your pocket. Like for example, right now in Kenya they are saying you can't be an MP if you don't have a degree. So those are the things that you should always check, like it's good you just have that paper. Because just now, go to school. Yes, because where we are, our, our, our environment in Africa, people believe you have to do that for you to be anything. And having traveled out there, education no. is really important. No, out there, actually, I would say out there, especially like in, in the US, I see talent and skill, those two things actually. Skill, actually skill is over talent. If you have a skill, if you can do anything with your hands, your brain, even if you have a big house and today it burns down, but you have a skill to fix some plumbing, and you can still eat, a skill. And any youth watching me out there, if you don't have a skill you can offer, and a very unique skill, start looking for that skill. Out there? Start looking for it. Wow, so Dimango, you've gone straight into content creation. Exactly. Wow. Yes. Which is your best video that you've ever done? The village life video that I did in my village, home vi at my home where we are staying right now. Uh -huh. Yeah. How was your experience in Ghana? It was really amazing and I started, I've already started seeing things in life in a very different way as I used to see them because Mara is my brother and both of us have grown in the village, mm -hmm. deep, deep in the village, whereby even Nairobi, I could just read it in books when I finished high school in 2015. That was the first time when I came to Nairobi because Mara was leaving Kenya to Colombia. So when I'm traveling out there, I'm like, wow, God is really great. And I'm like, this is what I want to do now. Did you actually date Ponte? <laughs> <laughs> That's a story for another day. <laughs> <laughs> What's the truth around it? 
<laughs> I think I've done lots of videos, and uh, for those who are smart, can tell what it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. How was it? It was so emotional when you left your one room in Eldoret. Exactly. Actually, it made me cry tears because that's where I've made memories. That's where I could stay without even. 10 Kenyan shillings in my pocket and mm. I could still survive and I was leaving that place as a different person I could travel leave it come back there and I'm like, you know, it's just a miracle I can't wait to host you but today we are hosting your brother exactly. Marwa. <laughs> so don't steal the shine today no, so But cute. out there go check out D Mwango on yeah. the YouTube subscribe check out how Thank this you. amazing family have got themselves into content creation. Yes. Subscribe to D Mwango. D Your kid bro's page is called? It's David, David Jr. Junior. David Jr. Yes. So check out David Jr. Thank check out so Ayamarwa. Check out D Mwango. <laughs> the whole family. And I know soon and very soon they'll open a YouTube for channel for the mother. For, congratulations. <laughs> for the mom. Wow. Whatever it is, I keep on telling you that content is king. Yeah. Content is king. Create content. Be consistent. You never know. Could just be the career that you've been waiting to start out there just like yes. picture clear there yes out there the 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 guy the guy, the the guy on the yes. on the i salute you bro um, the guy yes. on the ob yes. <laughs> Is a, he has his channel, yes. it's called Peter Clear, oh, Peter and he Clear. has taken this direction where he talks about his family, him yes. and his bro. Yes, then there's also where he talks about burning the oven. Wow, women are given experiences during their pregnancy and yes. all. Yeah. You know how women get different yeah. uh, feelings, what it's, yes. it's a roller coaster, and he's yes. been doing amazing, amazing thing. Yes, then the which are team, eh? team, eh? team and more. Team and Mo is Team also Mo. part of him. I really, I really encourage you guys like to keep pushing that idea. Mm -hmm. Maybe at the start you may see like, mm -hmm, but it's a real deal. It's a real deal. Real deal. Real deal, my brother. YouTube is a uh, real deal, bro. Look, man, from the villages to Las Vegas to Hawaii, Puerto Rico. Huh? Just Manila, because you're crazy. Philippines. Mm -hmm. I arrived there, man. I understand. Wow. You know, I've never had a tattoo in my body. But if I ever have a tattoo, it will be a YouTube logo. Just that. Yes. Wow. Yes. Thank you so much, D. Thank you. Asante sana. Keep pushing. Thank you. We will always be watching your work. And shout out to all Team D. I love you all, my people. Yeah. <laughs> subscribe. Tell them to subscribe to the channel. Yeah, subscribe to the channel also. Yes. And go yes. check out the logo. He does yes. amazing work. Where <laughs> we are today. Yes. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much, D. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Now, this is what I like hearing because the content creation, uh, I was meeting the online TV teams out here the other yes, day. Yes. We have Plug TV, yes. we have BTG, yes. we have Nzeki was here, yes. we have SPM. So many young men are now, young yes. men and women are now starting to understand the whole vibe about yes, YouTube content and content creation. Yes. And I want to tell you just out there, keep on going, keep on going, keep on pushing. Yes. And talking about Las Vegas and places that you've been, definitely yes. Yes. there's a very big program called the Kenya Airlift Program. This is the program that gives you a chance to travel to the United States to pursue your master's in IT. If you've ever wanted to join uh, a program that will see you get sponsorship, will see you get jobs, will see you fly to the United States, check out this video so that you can see what uh, Kenya Airlift Program is doing, courtesy of Upstate America. Have you heard of the Kenya Airlift Program, an initiative that supports Kenyan students to undertake IT-related master's programs in the U.S.? To qualify, one must have a minimum of a B-plane in KCSE plus a second-class division in any undergraduate major. Apply. For details, visit www.kenyaairliftprogram.com or give us a call on plus 1813-573-5619. Kenya Airlift Program. Empowering Kenyan students. Wow. So from Bang Bet Woodies, we have our winners. Philip Collins, send your, send your uh, contact so that we can uh, share our hoodies with you. From Facebook, I have Esther Miruki. You've also won yourself. Please make sure that uh, you send your contacts so that you can actually get uh, your hoodies with us euro ibambe nabangbet remember tonight there's a very very big game and that is that is england versus denmark who will make it 
to the finals who will make it to the finals and uh, where are you putting your money like i've told you put your money on england tomorrow we'll be here na auta kwa umela see a mambo na goal goal or anything that england squad is fire remember euro bangbet na bangbet and you get up to 100% bonuses on deposits over 99 bob also sms the word play to 20 829 and stand a chance to win the woodies and of course we've given the woodies there are more to be given away tomorrow i'll be giving more and make sure that if you are a winner you send your details bro yes bro i want to give you a chance yes to talk to content creators yes to talk to uh, people traveling out there yes and uh, to also tell us something that we didn't know about you start with content creators straight on this uh, uh, on the camera yo what's up what's up this is mara village boy from africa man i made my dream through content creation i strongly believe in it i feel like it's my cross you know so the thing is actually you can make it first is believing in yourself manifesting your dreams talking about them sometimes telling the world telling your close friends like man me i just want to be this guy and believing in it and when you wake up in the morning you dream about it you walk thinking about it and once you do something like that you'll always attract that stuff and for those content creators who are starting it's the hardest time because i know nobody knows you out there you're trying to make videos spending money just do it local local is international yes for you it looks like something maybe ah this one but somebody else watching you from new york city is like wow so any content is key at the end of the day it's the story and the content the story wins the day it carries everything yes so it doesn't matter if you're filming it with maybe a, a broken shot or something like that the story is king at the end of the day believe in yourself yes believe in yourself is very important and always make know you can make it from any background any i'm a testimony to that yes a guy from kenya from the villages to the big cities to Miami to everywhere you you can you can believe in yourself and also stop crying yes you know many young people like to complain and cry those two things when you do it you take your energy away stop complaining like the government is not doing something for you do something for yourself bro yes save yourself first before something else yes so it's like when you're in a plane you're told any emergency the first thing you do is put it to yourself before you help any other guys that's not being selfish it's trying to say don't look for other don't use other people as your scapegoat you know be yourself be the driver of your life and you'll win yes wow where are you looking out to travel to when things open up i'm still very open minded because as i told you sometimes travel change mm -hmm. you know lockdowns can hit and you'll be like we've changed mm -hmm. but i want to do at least three african countries mm -hmm. then september i plan to go to the us then from there now i go everywhere you know when you're in the us you can look for these visas of other countries because it's much easier people think you've made it in life you know mm -hmm. you understand so even travel is a whole vibe of understanding how it goes yes see for example if you want uh, this visa you really want and you have a us visa when you go there and you are looking for those visas they easily give it you know even so it will, it will be hard to get a visa for when you are here, here yes because then when you are in the people States. think you are running away from your home you are looking for a better life yes but if you already go to those countries one of those countries you know people know those countries those okay it's easy for you to get the visa of that country you want to go oh yes. how strong is the kenyan passport out here I'll say the thing is Kenyan passport you know uh, I think it's it's a good passport I, I cannot I cannot uh, if if I didn't like it maybe I would have already changed you know maybe I would be having babies out there trying to see how to change my Kenyan nationality but at the end of the day it, it runs down to nationality like loving your country you know mm. yes you know wearing the Kenyan flag on your hand all the time sleeping with it yes and when you're out there people ask you hey where are you from you know you meet in a hostel thousands of people maybe people from all over the world somebody's from i don't know spain this where are you from and say kenya for like wow man and they say good things about kenya safaris this yes so kenyan passport is still okay actually mm -hmm. yeah but i would wish if a government official is watching this maybe the president maybe he may watch a uh, push the idea of making more visa free countries for us it can be liberating and also there's this scenario of uh opening africa in like it's borderless from this year this they opened it let it be in effect 
where we can go to other countries, we can go to Burkina Faso, just booking flights and COVID tests and going, you know, then looking for visas. Like when I was going to South Africa, I spent a lot of money and my girlfriend couldn't spend a lot of money and we were in the same situation just because she had a different passport, you know. So something like that kind of, it consumes time, money, and even it, ha it makes travel kind of difficult. Mm. Yes. Why did you break up with your girlfriend? I think it's because, uh, I think, this is actually a perception because I, didn't, I, I don't have like strong answers to this. Traveling also, it's not for everybody sometimes. And okay. it's, like, it's like going to war, you know. Because like what really happened, the last scenario was we were in Mozambique and we couldn't leave the country. Because we were planning to, 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 to travel through the road up to Tanzania slowly. And Al-Shabaab had blocked the, north, the northern side of Mozambique and we couldn't cross. And our next uh, visas for her was Tanzania and we wanted to go to Tanzania. So we tried looking for the flight and the only flight was available was once a week, which was Mozambican airline. And it happens once a week for the entire country. So even we have money, but we can't travel. So we had to stay in Mozambique like for a whole month. And you know, other plans are blocked now. Like for her, she was planning to leave uh, Africa around January. So those plans like faded. We wanted to spend Christmas with our family in Kenya. They faded. So travel is like just going, you know. So she got tired. Yes, she, she can. Yes, I think that that is could be the reason. And you know, when people get tired, so any small thing that doesn't go straight, they think you're the problem when you're traveling with them, you know. Yes. And so she said, "That's that's enough." Yeah, and also we had we had the similar situation in, in in the Philippines, you know, with her. She was from Colombia. No, she's from Thailand. Oh, Thailand. Yes. Ah, uh, you went to Thailand and saw Thais. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Thailand. <laughs> it's a beautiful country. Beautiful country. Very beautiful. Yes. Wow. Yes. Marwa, I just want to say thank you so much for gracing our show. Thank you so much, Jalan, And as, for as we wait for things to open up, yes. and as you encourage more content creators yes. to open up and do a lot of things, yes. we just wish you the best. Thank you so much, Jalan. First, I want to say thank you for hosting me. Mm. You know, it's a great thing actually to be recognized sometimes. And uh, it's uh, maybe just be blessed by God. Not actually, maybe. Be thank blessed, you. yes. Thank you so much. Yes, bro. Wow, and uh, like I was telling you, we are building with Alex. Yes. And uh, we see your project. Yes. That thing is massive, my friend. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And, uh, no limit. Uh, and uh, you haven't done anything. It's just the slabs and 10 million is gone. Yes. Chuma, Simiti, Maui. Yeah, and like n right now I need glasses. Mm. And I think it's like 2.8 million. Glasses. Just glasses for the 2.8 million. Yes. So... Yeah, maybe you can link me up with some people. With, with Impala. Yes. With Impala glasses. Yes. I shall see what you are able to do. Yeah, it's, it's so that great. they can give you maybe at a good price. Yeah, that should be great. When you are ready, just let me know. All right. You have great. my number. Yes, yes, bro. Thank you, my brother. Yeah, thank you, Asante San. Let's yes. go for lunch. Thank you so much. <laughs> I think Asante your fish is ready. Yes. <laughs> okay. How are we? Hey. Hey.